One of us has food. One of us got robbed. Speaking girl. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I did want to die and I did scream cry in the shower. Blonde hair therapy. Clearly your girl was going through it. I made it to Sahara's. It's 3.57. She's like, should we drink wine? And I was like, it's yeah. hour somewhere. <laughs> We're going through breakups. I think we yeah. deserve this. <laughs> Actually, she said past tense the other day. For the first crazy. time, I spoke about it in past tense. And Brie was the one that caught it. Brie stole the last of my Riesling. You told me I could have it! <laughs> Where's the evidence? Is there footage of it? I wasn't recording at that point. But it's okay. Brie can have the better one because she's still going through it. And for me, it's in the... I feel like people think that I broke up first. Yeah, because, because you post- This girl is so crazy. She posted about it five minutes after the breakup. Okay, five days. It's been a month and a half. It's officially a month and a half today. I'm like out here being like, I'm not ready to talk about it yet, whatever. She's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna post about my, mine like tomorrow. I'm like, oh. Okay, our, our breakups were very different. And the, the, I had my mental breakdown a little delayed. <laughs> a little late. I had mine immediately. See, so. at first I was kind of, we'll get into it more, but I was confused because I was kind of fine. Actually, I was really sad for the first three days, but after that I was kind of fine. You were so good. It was scaring me. <laughs> I think it was 10 days after is when I had my breaking point and I did want to die and I did scream cry in the shower on the ground. Okay, amazing. So, <laughs> so we dealt with the emotions eventually. <laughs> but right now we're gonna order some Uber Eats. Yes. So we can have a little mukbang moment. I want something healthy, trying to glow up. See, she's entering breakup. this phase of the breakup See, right at now. first I did not care. She was going crazy with the gym and I was just like, where's this? I want that, no, but I didn't want to do it. Yeah. No, literally the way I'm like, <laughs> Legit, I'm not kidding guys. I was like, I would be just like crying during my workout. She was going to boxing classes, like getting her anger out and I was just like rotting on the couch. Yeah, literally. I was like, can I have that type of breakup? But literally. I'm entering, I'm just like, oh my God. I entered the phase where I want to change my hair. I had that phase, that only lasted 30 seconds for me. But like for you, I feel like- I sent her photos of what I'm thinking about doing. I'm, so, I feel like I'm so attached to your red hair that I'm I like know, scared. I know, but I can't, I don't, I don't know if I see it for myself forever. We're thinking about it. Ooh. Chipotle could be kind of good. I literally had Chipotle yesterday. Really? It was really good. Get Ugh, it. I haven't had get it in a long time. Would you get a bowl or a burrito? Bowl. Get it with some chips on the side. Literally fucking- It's so good. So okay, have your Uber delivery fees like gone up really heavily? Or do you, I, mean, I don't have that because I have Uber one. <laughs> okay. We get it. How much do you pay for that? I'm placing my order. Mine's arriving in 30 minutes. This is It's a $25 fucking order and I'm paying 33 And I have to tip. I'm getting a buffalo wrap. It's a vegan buffalo wrap with um, a side of sweet potato fries with chipotle mayo. Okay, we're gonna film her video and then we'll be back with you guys when my food's here and her food's here. <laughs> so one of us has food. One of us got robbed. <laughs> no, the way this man took a photo of the food outside of my door and then left with it. I got a refund though, don't worry. But I'm so sad. We waited, we just filmed an entire video on Sahara's channel. After Watch that, it. I was so starving and so excited for my stupid Chipotle and the delivery driver took it. So she was robbed. I'm taking back his tip because you do not deserve that. Not that Chipotle is that healthy. <laughs> it's trying to be like somewhat healthy. Now I'm going, to, I'm going healthy. to Popeyes. So annoyed though, I really wanted to. You saw how excited I was. She for was the so excited for the Chipotle. Like she was like, I'm starving, we gotta go. We were robbed. We are robbed. <laughs> okay. No, we. Me. Let's go grab food. I'm still hungry. We're back. I got so unhealthy. I didn't want to do this, but we're doing it. Popeyes, potatoes. We got the big size. And Popeyes mac and cheese. I, I deserve it. So I guess a quick thing that we could talk about is I did film a video on Valentine's Day. I don't know if I want to post it because it was just a very like sad vlog if it was, was there kind of i feel like it was like giving like very broken person trying to really? like pretend that she has it together oh, i feel like that was kind of the vibe because i really was just vlogging to keep myself busy on valentine's day because we broke up five days before yeah no i'm so sorry <laughs> it's okay i feel like i would cringe watching it speaking girl i'm so <laughs> sorry <but laughs> they're gonna like see me just <laughs> about you're trying to <laughs> you're gonna be like the best part of this video <laughs> i'm struggling Okay, I scream cried the other night. I don't know if I talked about that, but I did. I was definitely bottling up the emotions and Sahara was really scared that I was, she said I was handling it like a man. I, she was. 
She, this girl was like barely even sad. I was like, okay, I was more sad. You weren't around to see a lot of the. No, sad. I know. I feel like you felt it quick, and then I was like, D is she only gonna feel it for those three days? And you weren't the even. The thing is, I feel like when I was around people, I was fine. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like sad, but I wasn't scream crying. I wasn't like I didn't feel like I needed to like Facetime you and like cry, cry. Yeah. Like it was. I don't know. It was really weird. It was kind of confusing to me too because I feel like I cared about this person more than anyone else I've ever dated. So I thought that I should be more heartbroken. Mm -hmm. Just hit me a little delayed. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, very much, I immediately felt it. Which made me feel like a bad person because I was like, why don't I feel it? Like, did I not care as much as I thought I did? Like, it made me feel very heartless. But then me witnessing Brie though, I felt like shit because I was like, am I like a loser that I'm feeling it so deeply? Like that I'm hurting so badly and you're not hurting at all? When I know- Yeah, you you're very exaggerating with that. I was hurting. I was just thinking about the way I was feeling, but with you, I was thinking about how I was seeing you. Yeah. That it was like, is she just not okay? I thought it was just because there was no betrayal that I was like, oh yeah, I'm like fine. But um, turns out it does still hurt. It just might hit you a little bit. <laughs> Breakups are just confusing. That's a number one. Yeah. And like- We kept sending each other like the charts of like the breakup process. And then we're like, why are we experiencing it so, so differently? differently yeah. She's six weeks in, I'm three weeks in. Mm -hmm. And it's just like our, our order of emotions has been so different that I was like, these charts are not real. Mm -hmm. Maybe you hit all the stages, but not in the same order. You also just started bettering yourself so quickly. And I was like, why am I not? Like, I just want to rot on this couch and like not do anything. Like the idea of making any kind of plans made me want to die. But then because I had nothing going on, I also wanted to die. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing. So I was like, I wanted to do things, but then I didn't want to leave the house. But then I did want to leave the house. <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted. And then I was looking at you. I'm like, she's grinding out her content. She's living her life. She's thriving. She's doing so good. Like not even like didn't seem like you were hurting like that kind of stuff. That I was like, why am I doing so bad? Like, well, like on day, I'm trying to think. When was it that we did the Super Bowl thing? Was that day three of my that was breakup? Day three of your breakup. Yeah. Remember? Everyone kind of expected me to be heartbroken. I was like, I'm kind of not. So it would have felt very performative yeah. if I was like acting super hurt when I honestly felt fine. But I think it was just that immediate relief. Yeah. And then once we were also texting at that point, I think once we stopped texting is when I lost like the connection and I felt it really heavily. So hard. <laughs> Oops, <I'm crazy. laughs> and then it was really embarrassing for me because when we were at that Super Bowl party, no one was looking at you like a girl who just went through a breakup. Everyone was looking at me like that. And I'd been three weeks in at that point that I was like, how am I so heartbroken still and Bree's okay on day mm -hmm. three? I feel like your instant reaction was, this was the right decision. That's okay. I need to move yeah. on. Let it go. I was honestly proud of myself for making the decision because yeah, we both talked too. about how we didn't know if I could actually even do it. Bree is stronger than I am. I can tell you guys that much and very much because I knew for a fact in my situation, I could have never broken up with him. That's why he had to I think you would have eventually if I, you got pushed to a certain point. I feel like if it went on for like another three, four months, I think I would have hit my breaking mm -hmm. point. Absolutely. I kept telling Bri, I'm like, you're stronger than I am because I never could have broken up with him. Like, but towards the end, when I actually broke up, whether or not we stayed together, I wasn't able to see him. Yeah. So exactly. it kind of like, it was like, I'm going to have a pen pal or <laughs> I'm going to be single. It, I think that also made it easier knowing that I wasn't going to see it him It wasn't like, way. yeah, it wasn't like. I was spending Valentine's Day alone either way. Mm -hmm. So at least it wasn't like a, he could be here right now. He couldn't. I couldn't. But yeah, I feel like I talk about it in a way that makes it sound like I care less than I do. She cared a lot. I feel like I talk about it in a way that's like casual, like hee hee. But that's just how we deal with things, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting defensive. Because I'm just like, also, if he happens to watch this, I don't think he will. I don't want him to be like, she's talking about it so nonchalantly. But it's like, I feel it. I just cope by speaking in the way I'm speaking. And I think Brie is really good at like diving into her work. I can pick one priority and that's it though. And honestly, I did the same thing. I did exercise. Like yeah. working out was my priority. You also had school. I also did have school. So I it would have been a lot for you to keep up with everything. Bro, I remember when I was in school, I was like, I had this one mental breakdown. I think it was two weeks after my breakup. I was trying to do statistics, which is so fucking hard, okay? And I could not for the life of me figure it out. And I just started sobbing and scream crying and telling myself being like, statistics is hard enough. Statistics, <laughs> statistics while going through a breakup is impossible. Honestly, it's a good thing I'm in school because school during a breakup is really hard. I feel like because you felt it right away, it was good for you to have a distraction, but I felt like I almost needed no distractions. So you could. So that I could feel it. You said it hit you day 10. So, okay. This is, I think, what really um, triggered it is I was kind of fine. I was hurting, but I was fine. And then day 10, 
I went out for the first time. I got a little drunky for the first time. And once I started drinking, well, at first when I arrived, I was meeting up with friends. They were asking me about the breakup and I was like, I'm fine. Listen, two drinks in, we started talking about the relationship and I started bawling my eyes out. So I went to the bathroom, <laughs> cried for like 30 minutes, somehow didn't ruin my makeup, which was great. And then once I like gathered myself enough, I went back out there and this British man came up to me, like six foot British man. I thought he was cute. And he was just like immediately obsessed with me. And I was like, oh, this is fun. Good little distraction. So I was like flirting with him, whatever. And then I gave him my number and then I went home. But then when he texted me, <laughs> My drunk brain is just really silly and I don't know if I did this on purpose or on accident because to be honest, this is something my drunk ego does on purpose sometimes. <laughs> I, I sent him the screenshot back of, like, of the, their of, conversation. Of our conversation. I screenshotted his messages that he sent, sent it back and said, help, I don't understand. She was like, what is going on? And then he responds, where are you? <laughs> and then I did not answer at all. Oh my god, I forgot. I also told him all about my ex. I wouldn't shut up about him. I actually, I told him. I told him where we met. I was telling him all about our relationship. I was telling him where we woke up. So I woke up in the morning. I was like, I'm never hearing from this man again. That, that was a fun little silly night. Never hearing from him again. He talks to me. We're actually supposed to have a date tomorrow, but now he's not answering me. So I don't think the date's happening. It was just like fun, silly. But then also the next day, I felt like I had betrayed my ex, even though we weren't together, I don't like, there was nothing wrong with it, I'm single, but it was just like that loyalty tie that I, I think it also just confirmed in my brain that we're not getting back together. Even though I didn't do it, I just flirted with him and whatever, but like, like I fully went home alone, like it was nothing like that, but I just, I felt so guilty. And then that's when I started scream crying and having my mental breakdown and whatever. Meanwhile, still texting this man, trying to like plan a date. That's so funny. <laughs> this is what this girl texts me. She goes, I'm on my way home right now. I hate everyone. <laughs> And I'm like, what the fuck happened? And I'm literally like, is she okay? Like, first of all, she went out at like two or something. And I'm like, it's like 11 p.m. I, I, she hadn't answered me all night. So I was like, uh, what's happening? So I checked her location and she was out and I was like, are you alive? And she's like, yeah, I'm on my way home right now. I hate everything. And I'm like, like, should I call you? She's like, yeah, I'll call you in 10. Like 20 minutes goes by, I'm not getting a call. So I call her, she's like drunk on her couch. And I'm like, you're like, t I was like, why'd you say you hate everything? She's like, I don't hate everything. I love everything. Like everything was so fun. I had such a good time. And then. She just kept like saying a bunch of stuff. She was like, she was like, I told, I told this guy all about him. And then I was like, oh my God, Brianna, why would you do that? Let's just say the things she said. She shouldn't have said. <laughs> I was definitely giving drunk over sharing. Very much. But I mean, if he texts you in the morning, he found Which it, is crazy. Why would it, he text me? He found it charming. Where is he? He hasn't texted me in two days. <laughs> I think I'll text you tomorrow. No, uh, I don't really care. Okay, I have a nail appointment in like five minutes though. So... I'm gonna finish eating this and then I'm gonna go. Guys, it is exactly one month later since that clip you just watched. I didn't even mean to film the ending of this a month later. It's just what happened. And obviously something about me is different, but I am wearing the exact same sweatsuit, I realized. But she is blonde again. For all of you who missed my blonde hair, we're back. I also just finished my second ever therapy session. Blonde hair therapy. Clearly your girl was going through it. To be honest, after filming that video with Sahar, I was a little bit depressed. I was not doing well. And I feel like it wasn't even just the breakup, or at least it didn't feel like it was all because of the breakup. It just felt like my whole life was falling apart and I was just questioning everything. I was like, I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't know what I like, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if it was the breakup that caused all that. I was just not in a good headspace. So I was like, I need therapy. My first therapy session, I literally cried from the moment the call started to the moment it ended. Like I just, I sobbed the whole time. And then this one, we, we ended the session early because I had like nothing to talk about. I was, everything was good. And she's like, we could do bi-weekly calls instead of weekly if you want. And I was like, yeah, I guess we could do that. I don't know what's going on. I don't think I can heal in a week, but why does it feel like I did? I don't know. Life's weird. I know healing isn't linear, so I feel great right now. Maybe next week I won't feel as great. I'm hoping this continues though. I feel like I have a lot of things to look forward to right now. A lot of things are going right. I'm feeling more confident and like myself again. And I just feel like the work that I put in for that month of like reflecting, journaling, working out, therapy, dyeing my hair to start a new era. I feel like it's actually paying off. Like, you know, you put the work in and then suddenly your mental health improves. 
Who would have thought? I've been taking vitamins every day. I've been trying to get outside. I've just been doing all of the things that they tell you to do and it's annoying how well it works. I am sick right now. I don't know if you guys can hear my voice, but I have been coughing profusely for the last like five days. I just rewatched what we filmed a month ago and I feel like so much has happened since then. The guy, the guy that I was supposed to go on a date with, he's gone, which obviously I acted insane. A lot of men from my past have been trying to return. It's kind of scary. I think like three, three this month from like the past couple years have like been in my DMs trying to talk to me and I don't know what's happening. They heard I was single again. The only thing that still has to happen is my ex still has to come get his stuff and he wanted to take me out for dinner when he comes to get his stuff. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> we like text occasionally. We'll text like once a week, once every two weeks kind of thing. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I should let him take me out for dinner. That seems like a bad idea. But yeah, those are my updates. It gets better, even though in those moments, I genuinely was like, I don't know how it could get better. Like, I don't know how to get rid of this feeling. It feels like a feeling that I'm just gonna feel for the rest of my life, but it doesn't last. And I'm, I was so confused because I was like, I don't know, like when you feel like you have no purpose or nothing motivates you, you're like, what is the solution to this? How do I fix this? My advice, not from a professional, is just to kind of like, Put your head down and focus on the things that everyone tells you will help, even if you don't understand how it's gonna help. Go work out, journal, take your vitamins, go to therapy. Just like, if you do that long enough, suddenly you look around and you're like, wait, I don't, I don't feel the way I did before. I feel like that's especially true when it's something situational in your life that's making you feel that way, like for me going through a breakup. So if you're going through a breakup, you got this, and I love you, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.